Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Clearwater County and focusing on Fairchild. And I'm really excited about today's build because we are going to do quite a bit with this little community. But before we get to this, and what we're gonna do basically is build a grocery store and make this a community focused on outdoor recreation. But before we get to this, I wanna fix a couple of things that you all pointed out in the build. So these C5s are just way too big for this airport. Maybe. <laughs> so there was not a consensus around this, uh, but I found a couple of different options. So an F15 snuck its way in. We're not gonna put that one in, but I wanna put these C17As in and we'll see if that fixes things. Now I've tried this and they take a while to show up. So we're just going to let this go and we should have all of these set now. I keep clicking on all the ploppable pavement. <laughs> so there we go. All right, so we're good there. Next thing I wanna do is there was a comment that said that there's a way to make these outside lanes actually for slower vehicles. Oh, or drive down the center lane, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna give this a shot. So if you go into TMPE, there is a trucks use the outside lane option. And I want to take a look at this. Okay, so under policies, heavy vehicles prefer outer lanes on highway. So we're going to see if that does the trick. I'm curious if this doesn't work. I've got another option. Let's speed it up and see. Well, this is going to drive me crazy. I don't know why they're all over the place, but I wonder if I straighten this up a bit, if that if that fixes it. And with the power of YouTube <laughs> back to daytime, I have to do that. All right, so it seems like, oh, 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 there's a truck on the outside lane. So the other thing that we could have done, if they wouldn't have respected this, which they are now, could have lowered the speed of the uh, of the outer, of, of the outer lane, I guess? The inside lane? <laughs> Not sure. I could have also restricted the heavy vehicles from using this, but it seems like it's, it's doing what I hope. There, of course, are some that aren't gonna listen, but that's okay. That's okay, we'll go with that. And next, with this area. So Franklin Gardens, not a great name for this, but you all had a great name. And it came up a few times, Mulligan Trail. And I really like that. And one of the comments that I saw also talked about removing this road. And I think it made a great point. Uh, the point was basically that there isn't really a reality where this road would be removed. What would happen is it would remain as is and the park would be built around it. And I think that's a great point because this is really valuable land. Homes would have likely been developed down here. We can see where this road was, so we're gonna put it back. We'll call a brief mulligan near Mulligan Trail. Now that's ugly. <laughs> so we're gonna need to do some things here. And obviously node controller is not gonna be enough. We're gonna need to slope this. So I'm gonna come in here, click on this. Let's slope to about there. There we go. Carves it right into the ground. <laughs> so, not ideal, but I think we can we can fix this. So I'm just gonna soften this a bit. This is the height of realism. So, we'll be fine. <laughs> so, there we go. And what we're gonna do is just follow where this road used to be. It's obviously gonna be a little bit different, but we're gonna go with it. Now is where things get a little bit tricky. So I see what appears to be a path right here. I do not recall making that one. So I don't know if that was a power line at one point or what the case may be. But I've clearly veered off because the road connected up here. Now this, this isn't gonna work. So what we're gonna do is just leave part of this. Now this particular road that I, that I grabbed doesn't have a bridge, I'm pretty sure. And that's why we're not seeing it. I'll check it out. See if we can force this upgrade. Can't upgrade. So that's not going to work. Thinks that's a bridge. That's not a bridge. <laughs> so we go with this. And here's another location where I think bridging would be appropriate. And here as well. So now I'm going to raise these up to get these to be flat. And I'm curious if the sloping tool would have done a better job. Definitely did. There we go. We'll do the exact same thing over here. And then we want to make this worth our while if we're going to do this. 
those bridges are expensive so we are going to call the sack it out out here now this is a crazy crazy long cul-de-sac length this would be an absolute disaster for disaster recovery efforts but that is not why everything gets built not all the time anyway there we go and we'll need to do a little bit of work with the leveling here again the height of realism as we terraform a bit to fill this in but I'm going to show you in just a minute why it's so important to preserve this land. This could actually pay for the entire park. So if we take a look, let's look at some of these views you get here. Come up here, view of Ashland and the water and this bridge, <laughs> which is unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. Oh, now it's fabulous. There we go. So now this would be an absolutely lovely place to live if you're okay with a bit of driving. Just need to get some homes and some power here. But you know what? I think there's going to be no problem with any of that. Now, one of the things that is difficult in the game, I was recently asked about suburban development, how I feel about it. And, you know, I think the same could apply to rural development. And that is, it's wildly expensive and inefficient to provide utilities in areas that are very disconnected or very spread out. So that's one of the reasons why in a rural area you wouldn't see water pipes like this. You would see wells and septic systems. So this is very expensive, particularly uh, we're going to have our houses, you know, one every quarter mile, maybe. We're not going to have very many. The power lines are going to be there, but this is one of the reasons why you see a struggle for uh, rural broadband where they're just a bunch of companies that don't want to provide it without some sort of government intervention i don't really see rural bet broadband uh, such as you experience it in urban areas really being a thing and the reason is just it's so expensive to, to to lay the actual cable think about the efficiency of a rural uh, of laying a rural line versus laying an urban one you know a mile of uh, a mile power line in an urban area could cover I, I don't even know how many addresses, but uh, many of them. As opposed to the rural area where you just, you wouldn't have all that many homes being served. So it's unfortunate, but that is the reality of it. And uh, I think that it's something to be cognizant of. Okay, so we have this transformer up here. We need to get power down. And what I think that unfortunately means is we have to have another power line heading straight down. Slope too steep, I disagree. I think you just need to figure it out. <laughs> so, well, slope was too steep. <laughs> so that's why you have the undo button, I guess. Uh, let's see another. Uh, yeah, that's basically the only option that I have. So we're just going to roll with it. We'll go alongside. We'll double back down. And it's going to allow us to do that. So that's a good thing. And I guess anything is possible when you have anarchy on and you forget it. <laughs> so, and then I'm just going to run these power lines along the back of the lot. Maybe not the bat. No, that's not right. We're, we can't do that. We'll run it one home at a time. And we're going to play a little bit of a waiting game. So I'm going to zone all the homes that I'm going to zone. And then we will connect power. We're going to have more home. Well, no, we actually have this little mound blocking a bunch of our views. That's unfortunate. But we'll clump some houses acknowledging that that would be a very desirable spot. Same thing over here. Now you get a view of Shorewood. And then from over here, Shorewood, the Bay, and Belmont. It's beautiful. Just a just an absolutely stunning environment. We'll have a few more houses down here. There's some water. And that would certainly be an attraction. So let's go ahead and get the power here. Okay, so that should leave us completely connected. I am going to let this fill in for just a minute to make sure that we got everything in place. Okay, and that didn't take long at all. You can see that we've got homes on the side of the hill. 
these rural homes. I think we're missing one. <laughs> and I'm sure that that one's going to fill in any minute now. So I'm not going to be overly concerned about it. But these homes, you look out your back window. Maybe it's not great right now, but you can imagine they might thin out some of this and create a bit of a view for themselves. And there's our final house. Again, a beautiful view. Now, the unfortunate thing is, you know that these are, are valuable homes. They would be eventually. That's not going to happen in the game without a, a significant intervention on my behalf or a mod to force level up. But I think we're going to be fine. It's it's completely fine. So with that, very excited about this little development. Let's expand our park because this is we're going to do more with this in the future. This will be the kind of park that starts out small and eventually becomes something big. Now, back to Fairchild. And what we are seeing is the first of our commercial buildings popping up. Thankfully, it is a long time coming. One of the reasons for this is that realistic population too, completely rebalanced what's happening with our commercial. And ultimately what that meant is that I had basically no demand for anything. Thankfully, we're beyond that. So this is the main street and the main street, I think would have a different treatment than we see on the rest of the streets. And with that, let's slow it down. And we're gonna add sidewalks here. I think that that's totally appropriate. It's rural, but it's not unusual in a rural area to see the main street having uh, an, uh, more of a, an urban treatment, I guess I would call it. So I wanna upgrade the trees here. And then we've got these young lindens, and I've been curious about them. I haven't used them on a street, but I feel like they would look great. Oh, and they do. It's funny, I've got all of these trees downloaded, and I think all of my favorite ones come from Mr. Mason's additions to the base game now. So, I mean, clearly there are some great trees outside of there, but these are just outstanding. You don't really need anything else now, and I love that. So there we go. Now, today, what I want to do we're going to do something a little different with this. We're going to plat out the city. So the developers are going to come in with a plat and we're going to review it and put it down on paper. And one of the reasons we're going to do that is we've got some unique terrain here and we want to make use of it. So we have this lookout point and the idea that the developers have proposed to the city is to maximize this area, turn this into a park and have a bunch of neighborhoods that dead, dead end into trails. So it's a really fantastic idea making use of the natural environment and they wanna sneak in a neighborhood right here and make use of this. We take a look, look at that. <laughs> That's, it just doesn't get much better than that. It just, it's funny, you can't use, you can't use all of these areas in the base game. But it's really a shame because I feel like this game shines when you have the opportunity to use the entire map because they're just so expansive. You know, especially, I mean, I mean, this is really a credit to Exe and what Exe has done with this map. Just detail around every corner, just outstanding. So let's go back into here and we're using our 12 by 10 grid. They are going to stick with that. That is what has, has worked in the community. That is something that the community has stipulated that they strongly prefer the 12 by 10 grid. Now, obviously it's gonna break down a little bit. We can't stick with that when we just kind of go into this area. Now I'm gonna unfortunately need to have a quick mulligan here. And truthfully, I'm thinking we're gonna back this out because we need a place for our grocery store. And this is the sort of thing that the community could stipulate is you can build this. You need to reserve land for a grocery store. Obviously right now, if you need to get a loaf of bread, I don't know where you go. Why don't we, why don't we measure it? So obviously this is as the crow flies, but if you were here, there's not even a grocery store in, in Belmont. So you're driving all the way to Ashland. There are lots of communities like that, but it's not ideal. So this, to, for this community, in my mind, to be viable, at least when you're looking at Belmont, it feels a bit more integrated into Shorewood and 
Ashland. That's not the case over here. We're really isolated. We need to be able to, to serve this community within this community. So there's a bit of what we're gonna do. Let's go back in and continue to plat out this area. So again, we're gonna go over 12 and we're sticking pretty rigidly to the grid in this one. And that could change in the future, but for the time being, it's a fairly narrow city as we work and keep things close, this will keep utility costs down. And that would be something that the developers would be interested in. Because if we take a look at our water pipes, we don't have to stretch out. We just stretch longer. So there we go. Water in place. And we'll continue down this way as well. And truthfully, this will get me to reconsider this road right here. We want this to line up if we can. We're platting this out, so we're going to get that perfect. And if that oddity were there, you can bet that the community would have something to say about it. Doesn't mean it'll change, but it has something to say about it. <laughs> so, and here's where the magic is going to happen. So we'll come up here with some 10 unit stubs. So not only do these homes have a good view, and right here it's too steep, we won't do anything here. We'll come up 10 units here, and over here we can actually extend our grid. So we will. In fact, we can do it there as well. That's fine. And we'll just leave this like that. We will connect this up. Now, if I'm following my grid, I should be able to find 12 units and then come over here and make that connection naturally. And that didn't work. <laughs> so that's fine. The other way to do it would be to come here. And obviously we have our 12 units and our 12 units here. And interestingly, it would probably actually work better to come in this way. And that leads to a natural termination of the city as well. So that's what we're going to do. Now, we don't develop everything that's platted. That's not the way it works. But we do have these plans on the books and we'll develop the most attractive lands first and the easiest to serve with utilities. And there's likely going to be a requirement if this comes through and they're offering up park, parkland to have some reasonable time frame for that to be accomplished in. And it wouldn't be done after the build is done. That is exactly what the developers would like. They'd like to say, well, we want to be able to pay for this park, so we want to sell our properties. And the city is going to say, absolutely not. You must develop some of your, you can develop some of your properties, maybe phase one of your development. Let's say that phase one is this extension right here, which they are intending to be the most valuable properties. That That's pretty, pretty typical that they'll go with the least controversial, most uh, saleable lots, high end lots that, you know, reasonably the margins higher. So they're going to go for those first. So we're going to develop out here. So we'll upgrade the roads. They're going to fight tooth and nail against sidewalks. They're going to say that the rest of the community doesn't have sidewalks. So why should we? And there will be political pressure to avoid them. And that political pressure will win the day. So here we go. Just this little area right here is what we'll develop to start out with. So single family homes and they are going to certainly make some concessions. <laughs> we have dog parks. Let's make sure our, our guidelines are on. It's one of those weird things. You uh, when you add these, oh, I'm still sliding around and I don't know if. Oh, look at that. So they don't even snap to the planning roads and they're not even considered roads. But to these country roads, I can slide. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll take it. <laughs> and there you go. A dog park. This is, I've never really gotten this close. This is a very, at least in my area, an unusual dog park. Usually dog parks are on landfills. <laughs> and they're, uh, I wouldn't call them fancy by any stretch. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about our zoning here. We're gonna spread things out just a little bit. And I need to make sure that the Fairchild zoning is actually over here. So let's extend this out. Otherwise we'll lose our building theme and that is not what we want. The other thing is I'm adding a, a variety of, of lot sizes here and I'm not sure that these lot sizes are actually available. So that is going to be something that we need to figure out.
There we go. So I feel like this is a fairly reasonable layout. And we're going to just kind of pack them in right here. We'll leave some trail connections. And a bit of space. Again, this is supposed to blend into nature. And the residents here are going to be really uh, nature-minded. That's, that's the whole sales pitch here. Is that if you live here, you can have a house right in nature. Now here, we're not going to have any trails. If you take, or we won't have any of these cul-de-sacs, but we will have some trail connections. So I want to thoughtfully plan that. I think that we're going to have one right about here. So as we lay this zoning out, I want to leave that gap. I'm giving a variety of lot sizes. Now I don't know that our power has jumped yet. It has. Good. Good. That's really important. Let's check this out and watch it level up. We've got one dog park, but I'm not overly concerned because this will be a gigantic park. And while that's going, I got a grocery store asset that I'm really excited to bring into the build. So let's do that right now. It's an Aldi's. An Aldi? Aldi's? <laughs> Uh, is that just us that calls them Aldi's? I don't know. So here we are with this Aldi asset. Aldi is actually a, a fairly lovely company to work with. Uh, in, in, the, in the instances that I have, they are very nice, very collaborative, and uh, it's always appreciated. So we've got this Aldi here. We need to give it a parking lot. And we are going to do that right now. So let's go ahead. We want this parking lot to be, you know, this is Aldi. So just thinking about the way they operate, they are going to likely be okay with a little bit less parking than maybe some other, than maybe some other users. So we're going to have an access here and then we'll come back around and connect up here. And then we'll have our parking lot here. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use the big parking lots. So I've been, I go, I've been going back and forth and now I'm, I'm back in a, I like big parking lots phase. <laughs> so if you don't like big parking lots, I apologize. Now hold on alt to slide this down and hopefully I can make this look a little bit rational. There we go. We're going to need to do something about that, but that's a, that's a future thing. For now I just want to get this in place. So we've got a nice connection through there with a big bump. We'll fix that. <laughs> so now our border. So I'm going to send this back and I want to be able to connect. So I will come back there and look at that monstrosity. And I've always got to play with this because I, I forget the most appropriate way, or I should say not the most appropriate, the correct way of doing this all the time. Okay, I had what I will lovingly call a mental lapse, where I could not for the life of me figure this out. So these are borders. This is a drive. I, can, I have to separate these. I can't make this a border. It completely screws everything up. That's okay. We got it and we're good. So now we will take this and I'm going to alt slide this. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> we'll just slide it over gently. And I don't love what that does. Because we've already got this messy sign right here and a dip. I don't know if I can node controller that out of existence. We're certainly going to try. You know what? That's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I'm going to take it and we'll work with it. Or at least I'll try. So let's go ahead and get some parking in here. And we have to have some accessible parking up front, maybe even more than I, I, I've added. And then we'll need to use our filler pieces. And I have Anarchy on, which I, I think I need. But it certainly feels like a disadvantage sometimes. And this isn't going to be the right length, so we'll need to modify that. I'm also going to reconsider this. Let's get those accessible stalls all up front. Let's, let's give that some more thought. And then around the back end, we will add in... Uh, stalls for anybody. Okay, so I'm going to continue to... Oh, the, ah, they rotate around like that. Ah. <laughs> and it's hard to tell which way you're facing. Okay, back to the border. 
Now here's where I'm going to struggle. A little too close. I want to get one more row in here. And truthfully, this... It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. Let's go ahead and we will come back a little bit more. And I'm getting a whole bunch of road guidelines messing me up. So we're going to stop that and give that one more shot. I need to go out three tiles to be able to fit those rows in. Now, I'm sure that Aldi would love an access onto the main highway. It's just not going to happen. There's no way in a million years. That is so dangerous. If we have these cars, this is a highway. It's probably a state highway. We do not want any cars loading out there. That said, we do want a pedestrian access. We do want Main Street upgraded. So that would, would likely be a consideration with this particular development. This is not attractive. I'm not going to I'm not going to pretend it is. I'm also not going to pretend that Aldi is going to much care whether the community requires Oh, well, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm not going to care or pretend that Aldi is going to care much that the community would like to see, you know, uh landscape islands for instance. That said, Aldi is going to be a good corporate citizen and help us out there. There we go. So we've got some lumpies and bumpies. They're going to drive me crazy. We're going to fix them. So we'll just grab all of this stuff and let's line it up to this. There we go. Beautiful-ish. No, that looks bad. We should have pre-graded this. It was a mistake not to, and this is why. <laughs> so we're going to keep playing until we get it right. There we go. So I think that flattens that out pretty well. So let's go ahead and add some landscape islands. Aldi takes some pride in their development. And I could not, for the life of me, figure out what this was called. And apparently it's oval, large, or oval medium. A large is too big, medium's too small. Is, is large too? Yeah, that seems that seems excessive. It's probably not. I'm probably just I'm probably just feeling sensitive today. <laughs> So, all right, all right, I'll just go with it. Or I could go with mulch. Oh, that is also, I wish I had a, I wish the medium was a little bit more medium. <laughs> it doesn't look like that's in the cards. This curb C, yeah, that's also not going to work. We'll go with large. It's, it's good enough. And I'm just going to work on one side here and then we'll copy it over the next. And let's get these exactly how we want them. So we've got this, let's make it nighttime. Ooh, that's dark. <laughs> so uh, let's get some lights. Okay, so we've got these Japanese parking lot lights and I think they look very nice. We go. So we're gonna need one in the middle of the lot as well. That's very clear to me. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we'll put that right in between the sixth stall. And then we're also going to need some light here. And we're going to do some work here. Although there are street lights there. It's just a little bit dim. Let's, before, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve judgment. Let's go ahead and clone these and see if I feel any differently. You know, that's, that's actually not terrible. I don't see any empty spots in the parking lot where things are just a little bit too much in terms of the the light if you were walking you'd be able to to see no one would, could jump you uh the bigger problem would be on the streets <laughs> but in this area it's going to be by design that's what the community wants just the glowing lights of the city so let's get this cleaned up a bit there are a few things we could do i could certainly put some grass uh some some grass in here or i could just cement this whole thing I want to see, do we have any carts? Actually, it's Aldi. Aldi doesn't have a cart corral. They require you to put a coin inside of the cart and then you have to return it to the store. So it makes absolutely no sense if we're thinking about re realism that we would do that. So let's just go ahead. We'll fill this in. Cost saving measure and it'll give us the opportunity we can add in our own landscaping, which I'm very excited to do. Let's take this back today. There we go. So we've got these small tree planters. And I think what we're gonna do is we'll place a few of them. Let's use move it to line all of these up. 
So we'll come in here, we'll line up the objects, and then yeah, that's 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 pretty good, I think. Now we need to think about some trees for in here. And honestly, the small linden is probably gonna work well if we take a look at some of these. And it's not happy with me. There we go. We got prop. Interesting. It is being very particular. So if I move this down, yeah, prop a tree anarchy is on. I wonder if I just need to turn this on and if that'll do the trick for me. Yep, that works. So yeah, we'll go with these small lindens again. I My fear is that if I come in here with anything else, it's going to be overwhelming. These horse chestnuts are supposedly small, but those are just too much. That 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 seems, you know, even this one, just too much. So we'll come in with these and some flowers. You know, there's something ironic and funny about me struggling to be able to... <laughs> get rid of the trees in the previous episode and this one I can't get rid of them to save my life <laughs> so uh, what are you gonna do all right so here let's go ahead and they'll do a little bit more with trees I'm gonna go with some workshop trees here and we'll see what we have so we've got our leafies and I love 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 these we'll just go with some of these sometimes I just like to place them by hand feels good over here, there's not enough space, which is unfortunate. This blank wall, would I, I would have a problem with that facing a home. Same with this. The loading bay would certainly cause some issues. You'd probably ask for four-sided architecture on a building like this, uh, in this location, if it were a bigger community. I don't know that you're getting away with it in a community of this size. And we will ask for that path connection to the main street. And that road will be upgraded. Now you see our community starting to take shape. Got some good stuff going on here. This will eventually be an extension of Main Street. Yes, there is some homes. That's totally normal and fine. Some people might not love that, but that does happen. This community is now an appropriate size to have a post office, and we're absolutely going to have one. And the funny thing is, you know, my family is originally from a community with maybe 150 people on my, my mom's side and they had a post office so it's not it's not as if your community needs to be huge to get a post office uh now i think it's a bit more challenging but it, back in the day not so much and i have anarchy on so we have trees popping through our buildings Oh yeah, just wasting all that money we don't have. <laughs> so beautiful. Now, when you when you use the picker tool, it doesn't copy your trees. So just something to be aware of if you're using a custom tree. You're gonna want to grab that again and go through and make that upgrade. Perfect. There's the anarchy that I had on. So many anarchies. <laughs> and we're gonna extend Main Street out. I don't think that we have a we have a, we have some demand for commercial, but it's not overwhelming. Either way, it's fine. And I want to make sure that we're focusing the zoning on this particular street. So let's go into our zoning tool again, and we'll disable zoning on some of these side streets. That is not what I wanted to do. There we go, and that just cleans things up a bit. And now we're really focusing our density in a nice combined space now interestingly oh the zoning's on these as well that's interesting so we'll need to pay attention to that because if we develop back here which we might not we might just leave it with some empty space empty uh open space if we were to do something differently we would certainly want to make sure that we change the zoning add a node here and get things working the way they're supposed to thankfully this jumped i was really concerned that it wasn't going to we do have this zoned. We are gonna to need to change this, but thankfully for the time being, we are safe. So I wanna finish out by working a bit on this park. So I need a name for this park. So if you have a great name, please let me know. We're gonna use our terrain to guide this park. And really it's from about here all the way to over here. And we are gonna back this out almost to people's yards. Applegate Park. So we'll take this and we'll run it down. 
and we will allow development of these cul-de-sacs. Now I'm wondering, I have never been able to get the cul-de-sac thing to work. If I stretch this, I need to add a node and then it should work. So let me pop into the unified UI. We'll add a node and then we'll pop back in the node controller, control N. And what do we use for this one? This one actually looks pretty convincing. Why don't we just do 150 just so it's easy for me to remember. And I can't type in here anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> we just need to get it close. Not a time to let perfect be the enemy of good, yeah, but we're going to do it anyway. That's that's what I do. Look at all this. Look at all this parking up this road. That's awesome. So in a lot of the state parks where I live, there is you can get into the park for free. If you park on the outside of it, you can walk in. Uh, this, though, will be a county park. So I, I want to think about that because of that. I want to make the, the cost of admittance to be relatively inexpensive, if not free. After all, this is just an exaction that the county got from a developer. So definitely an important thing, but we don't want to get too crazy. Now, I love, those look really great. We are going to, I think I'm going to plop a house at the end of these. No, no, we're not. No, we're not. The reason we're not going to is this is going to be our path connection. Uh, I, I, it would feel pretty rational, though. Now, I don't know that I have plopped the growables anyway. Check that out. I don't. So I might want to add that in if I start making some of these cul-de-sacs because you'd want to wrap the cul-de-sac with these. You wouldn't necessarily want them to be just completely. And I guess I could. I wonder if I just move this. So I thought that I had plopped the growables on in one point. But if I move this, what does it do to these homes and what does it do to their zoning? <laughs> just just ruins them. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Uh, I do have the... Uh, no, I don't. So this isn't something that I do very often. So when I do do it, it is it is a, a new thing for me every time. Okay, I'm going to move these back. And I'm not going to be able to undo that. <laughs> so I'm going to have to move these back manually. That's okay. Gives me an opportunity. Maybe I'll stretch them out a little bit. Pull them back. Give them a bigger front yard. Just what everyone wants. <laughs> Just, just more to mow. <laughs> and let's go ahead and get these upgraded as well. I hope this doesn't ruin everything. It didn't. That's fine. That's awesome. Now, I ruined everything because I got rid of zoning. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going to have to fix that. And same deal over here. There we go. So, now we need some park pads in this area. So... We're going to need a gate. I'm going to have an invisible gate again. I, I love using those. And we are going to use the nature preserve gate. So we've got to find the main entrance. So this is the gravel main entrance. Preserve main entrance. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to have this line up right in front. Right there. So I was thinking of, of trying to use the gravel paths. The problem is, look at this terrain. The, without the ability to have the self-leveling pads, this is going to be a real monumental pain. So as much as I would like to go ahead and do that, I think for all of our sanity, <laughs> I'm just going to not do all of that grading. We'll, we'll just respect our topography. We'll have, we'll have to make sure that we're switchbacking. Make sure that we're making all of our connections that we've promised to make. Because you better believe that that would be some, a selling feature of the neighborhood. And one that folks would be very unhappy if the developers just happen to forget about. So I'm going to try to wind this up to that area right there. Okay, and I got a little, little crazy with this one, so we will fix this. There we go. So I can't show this to my wife. Because if I did, she would probably wonder why we aren't living in a place more like this. She's an avid runner, and I think this would be an absolute delight and a dream for her. Maybe someday. But, I certainly understand the appeal. Imagine being able to step out of your house and go for a, walk out and go for a hike or go for a run. If you were training for a marathon, this would be the ideal place to be. And the pads not being hardscape, this is one of the things my wife has taught me, that makes it significantly better on your joints 
and it makes it a much more pleasurable running experience. So we'll run that up that way and over here. There we go. And we're going to need to node controller all of this. Truthfully, I don't love the way that that came out. So we're going to call them all again and run this just straight up. There we go. All right. So we're going to do the exact same thing with the rest of these as well. There we go. And we're going to have a crossing here. So let's use this as, a, as our opportunity. So we'll run it along where the homes are. And then we will begin our ascent into the park. So we get some views on our hike. And we'll follow the terrain. We'll make it an interesting hike for ourselves. And at the top, where we can have a beautiful view. And then provide an alternate path down. That's it's important to, uh, to, to most people. Maybe most people isn't, isn't, <laughs> isn't true. But it's important to some people. On a hike, I'd prefer it. There we go. And that's where we'll add in something so we can observe the views and then we'll have another path back here and we're going to snake our way back up and make a connection in with our road up there so it's difficult to see some of these but i'll give you a, a brief vantage point here's what we're working with we're going to fill this in with even more trails so obviously we need to come from each of our cul-de-sac bulbs up there we go and I want to have another trail that comes back around and provides an opportunity to get good views of Fairchild and the airport because that would also be another view that's important to people. Particularly if you're on the base and you come here for a brief jog, you might be very interested in that view. There you go. And we now need to make a couple of node connections. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out but I absolutely believe we need some nodes for crossings. So let's do that now. Then we'll come into node controller and make this a crossing. So now people could cross there, same thing here. Can't forget to do this, otherwise you're not really doing what you meant to do. Same thing here. I think that we need to make sure that we have the opportunity, that we're given the opportunity to cross the road. There it's already present. We should be in a pretty good place. So I think that this would be a huge draw for the community. I, I can think of another community with a similar layout to this. And the homes right up against the cul-de-sac bulb with the, the, the trails. I mean, very, very, very desirable. I'm just going to make sure that these trails feel like they're not floating above the bulb. Really, really like this. There we go. Beautiful connections. Let's move some of these homes on the edge. Give them a little bit more space. And really be thoughtful about the way that we're laying this out. Okay, that's pretty good. And I bet you the terrain's too steep here. It'd be great to add another path connection. Yeah, it's just too much. So let's slope some of these to make sure that it's reasonable-ish. So interestingly, so I was thinking about uh, the gravel paths and one of the reasons that I didn't really want to go with them is ADA considerations that's Americans with Disabilities Act one of the things you need to think about if you're going to build a, there's actually a, a guide that the federal government authorizes or authors to demonstrate the slopes that trails can be at and there is a method to the madness i'm sure that you've been on trails that aren't super sloped they're probably pretty old that, that have super slopes they're probably pretty old uh, or they didn't receive federal funding if they did receive federal funding which any municipality with a significant enough project would would try this would certainly be one that i would look at and think this is a big project <laughs> we want all the all the help we can get even if a federal project means a significant more, significantly more red tape oversight. You're still going to want that money if you can get it. Uh, that said, I don't have to worry about that with Node Controller. <laughs> so I can just slope things, make them reasonable, make it a great place to walk. Okay, so this has created some challenges for us. 
and, you know, some of these lumpies and bumpies might be natural. I mean, with how rocky it is in Clearwater County, you can imagine that there might be some blasting to put these into place. Where I get a bit more concerned is there's some unnaturalness that you start to see. And I think it's really evident when you look here and you start to see some of these uh, ravine sort of things. We're going to go through and I'm going to smooth out a little bit of that. Let's turn our strength way, way down and we'll use a fuzzy brush too. We'll make it bigger, just on the inside. On the outside, maybe I'll, I'll be a little less concerned. I just don't want it to go in on the inside of the path. That feels pretty unnatural to me. Although it could be drainage, that's not totally off. There we go. Now, this house is begging for water. We're going to give it to him. There we go. And this one, too, just to be safe. There we go. I, I, I think that's feeling pretty good. No workers. <laughs> that is that is our, our, uh, our normal. So we could fix some of that by zoning it in this area back here. We're absolutely going to do that. We could obviously use some parks. And I think there would be some value. Oh, I don't love this. We're going to get this fixed. So there's some zoning. Obviously, this isn't going to matter much either way. It's more of a, a personal irritant, I'll, I'll call it. <laughs> Just, I don't want to see that. <laughs> and I'm noticing that we've got some sloping things happening here too. So we'll do, we'll hit it with one more bit of sloping. Then this particular node, I think, needs to slope. It is. All right. It's others. <laughs> so sometimes you just got to go through and figure those out. The rest of it looks pretty darn good. So I really like this. Let's make sure we're not charging anybody anything. Not that it matters anyway. No one's coming in through this main gate. <laughs> They're all coming in through the backyards. And I want to spread these homes out once again. You know, I want one of these homes. <laughs> it seems like a lovely place to live. <laughs> so, ooh, death care. Death care. We've got lots of death care. Why are you... Can nobody get to you? I went too, I went too far. Now it's madness. <laughs> the insanity means that no one can pick up the dead body. I hope that that, uh, it, that fixes it. We'll have to see. Uh, and I never finished my landscaping over here, so we're going to finish that before we move on to other things. Okay, look at that. That is looking good, in my opinion. Let's add a little bit more. You can never have too many trees. I firmly believe that. That, that feels good. And I think we can do a little bit more to clean this up with just a... I'll add some flowers. And before I forget, I also want to take a look at where our spawn points are for this building. And you can see that they're all coming to this particular location. I don't love that. We are going to add a spawn point for garbage trucks and for... Interesting. So, I was of the impression that this would receive a freight vehicle. It does not. Okay, well, we'll just go with that. We'll have the garbage truck come back there. It's at least something. Okay, so that's interesting. I, I'm not sure what the characteristics of this building are. That makes me very curious. So if I look at the Rico settings, level one, six by six, I'm afraid to change it. It'll be fine. We'll just go with that. I wish it had, uh, I wish it had some sort of freight but it'll be fine. So this land here was so not level <laughs> that it has created a number of issues. We are going to try to clean this up just a little bit. Because I think that everything around it can handle this just a little bit better than, than this. There we go. That should be acceptable. I do want to try to improve this though. So we'll go through and we'll slope their yards a bit. Same here. And we'll pop that down. There we go. So there's certainly a lot more to do here 
Uh, but I feel like we're starting to move in a direction where this is feeling a bit like a community. Obviously, one of the things we want to look at is land value. It's very poor here. Uh, you look at Belmont, for instance, things are looking pretty good. It does have a water source, and that's the thing. This is the first community that we've built without any water near it. So we just have this situation. That said, I have been thinking about bringing a mod in. And I'm, I'm curious uh, what your thoughts are about it. So there is a mod that allows you to have storm water. So that would mean that I have rain in the builds. Uh, but we'd also have that mechanic. We could have stormwater ponds. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to experiment with it. I can't promise that it's one that would stay in the build. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I would certainly entertain giving it a shot. So in the comments, let me know. Are you interested in stormwater management? So that would mean detention basins and ponds throughout the build. We'd have to really give that some thought. There is a storm sewer mechanic that I could certainly work to incorporate. My problem is that the, the storm facilities, they just use the drainage pipes, which aren't great. So I'm not sure how excited I would be to fully incorporate that. That said, lots and lots of things that we've done today. And I think that we need to zoom in here, admire the cars and have a brief city tour. Okay, and that was a great city tour. Lots of fun. And I want to end on this because I think this is really illustrative of, of the difference between some of these communities. So take a look. Right here, you can see Ashland in the background. and It is just lit up. So this would be a place that if you're in the middle of the town, I don't know that you would see the stars uh, as clearly as you would out here because it's very dark. We've got some lighting here. I think we want to give this some more thought in the next one. Maybe customize our street lights and really make this feel like a unique place. Uh, even more than it already does. Right now, it's really Aldi that has lights and <laughs> that's about it. But I really, I really like that about the community. I feel like it is totally different. When we look at some of these other communities, you can see them at night. You can see Aldi at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, 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 that is actually a great point. That's not Aldi. That is actually our hidden asset. So this is our cargo terminal that we have turned off in the corner. I'm going to move that just a little bit further out. And see if that hides the light. It does not. <laughs> so you're going to have to forgive the lights of that in the rest of the city tours. I'm afraid to throw it too far away. So if I just bring it out here, I guess I can always see it at night. So maybe it's not a big deal. <laughs> so yeah, Aldi is not viewable at night, I guess. Even out here. Yeah, you can see it. But it, it really gives perspective as to the size of the community right now. But we're gonna continue to grow up. We've got a number of things that I wanna work in, uh, a few more uh, stores. I, I I still wanna work in a couple of really unique buildings to make this place stand out in and of itself. And I really wanna detail the heck out of this one. It's a small town and these places, these places are special. And I think that it's, 
it's really important to, to demonstrate why they're special. I also want to bring in the forestry brush. That's something that I haven't done. I've just been copying trees. I think it's about time because that this particular area, I think, would have quite a few trees all the way around it planted by the developer or occurring naturally. So the last thing I want to do is admire a couple of views that we have from our parks. Oh, that is a shame. We're going to change that. I don't want all those cars coming up there driving around just because it's fun to drive and take a look. That's not the point of this. So there you go. You got a view there. Got a view here, although we didn't add our platform and we should finish up with that. Oh yeah, now now we get a view. <laughs> that, uh, I'm sure that would upset a number of people. Maybe you're included. But I do think that that view, there would be some work to make that view happen. Uh, and we're not done with this park. We've got a lot more to do here, but that is where I want to start. We're going to take this, spin it around, we can add this, and truthfully, we should probably take a look at our heights, get this bad boy as close to the edge as we can. Okay, there we go. And if you were standing in here, oh, look at that. A beautiful view of Ashland. If you look over here, an obstructed view of Shorewood, but still pretty darn good, particularly in the winter. That is the payoff for walking all the way over here. So with that, I hope that you've enjoyed this build today. I've had a great time. Uh, if you did like this, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.